right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, again, this is uh, to talk about the latest merger between uh, RAP protocol from Bender and then Plenty. Um, do you guys want to talk a little bit more about that before we uh, get started with some community questions? Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to kick it off. I think, you know, it's a, it's a natural conclusion to a path that we started, um, you know, like almost a year ago uh, with the tester, uh, between the tester and the Bender team. Like we've always been, you know, like um, friends and collaborators since the beginning. Um, I think it started with um, a dual incentive program between uh, plenty farms and ponds and between like um, wrap uh, liquidity pools on keep you up at the time you know plenty that you, you had no decks so it was like it was very early days so I think it started there and 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 then after that we did CITES together and and now it's like you know it's a it's a natural the natural course of things that we you know that we merge and we collaborate together and I think you know one thing I'm particularly about and, and that's something that we said from the very beginning and, and that's really like the, the the DNA of our relationship which is that you know, like I've, I've always said that it's like for DeFi on Tezos to succeed, you need like an alignment of players. You need everyone to work on the same team because like, you know, all the like all the blockchains, they have like, a lot, they have a lot of developers, maybe they have more TVR than, than, than Tezos has, you know. So, so for us to kind of like make a dent in this market, there's collaboration and, and, and alignment is required. And so as, you know, when speaking with Omen Burn, you know, like I've always seen this kind of like same DNA, same attitude, like, you know, like it's like, let's make the pie bigger rather than like try to, to fight for the, the biggest uh, share of, of a small pie. So, so yeah, so that's, you know, I'm, I'm super happy about that. There's a huge roadmap, super ambitious. I think like the Plenty Network, um, you know, roadmap and the, the product that, that, that we're going to build together is going to be amazing. And, and so that's, um, I'm super excited about that. Cool, man. Yeah, it, it, it all started with the need for liquidity on Tezos. And we both saw that and uh, um, uh, CTES was a next logical step. And um, yeah, how do you get more liquidity in Tezos by building more bridges? So yeah, we've been talking about it for a long time and, and uh, now it came to uh, fruition. Fruition, is that the right word? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I guess we'll expand on that real quick, uh, Burns, because you already, uh, you know, let, let some of the cat out of the bag. Um, what, um, what bridges are you looking at expanding into? I know we mentioned Avalanche a little bit. Um, if you can give us a little bit more context, you know, whatever you want to share. Like just building bridges is not going to uh, bring any liquidity. So there needs to be a use case. Like in the beginning when we started, when you guys started rap and we started plenty, uh, that was a natural fit. So users could bridge and then do something with their assets. And that's also something important for when we launch the Avalanche bridge or the Binance Smart Chain bridge or the, the Polygon bridge. Like there needs to be something to do on Tezos with your bridged assets. So we're also, um, working with a few other people who want to launch like more um, smaller scale DeFi products, uh, but they want to target, let's say the Avalanche community or the Polygon community. And those are the products that can really uh, uh, bring a lot of liquidity in. And um, we would be like more of a facilitator uh, for more DeFi projects projects on Tezos. Well, well said. Um, yeah, if you guys have anything else you guys want to touch on before we get into uh, that, we have a lot of community questions. <laughs> yeah, the community yesterday was very excited to see it. Um, I think it was something that they had not seen coming. We had kind of teased a little bit about it, um, but to the, to the magnitude that we did accomplish this, I don't think really anyone saw it coming. So. Yeah, I would love to... Uh discuss a little bit about the beginning of plenty like we we started it as a yeah as an experiment like there was no DeFi ecosystem and now it's evolving with products like CTES and it becomes more mature and um 
yeah, now now we have an opportunity to really level up. Like the DeFi was really in its infancy last year. We did a lot of cool stuff, but now it's time for the next step, get more liquidity in and, and all grow together. Like that's that, that's the thing that I'm I've missed a bit um, in uh, um, how, how to how to rephrase this. <laughs> I didn't miss it per se, but we need to realize that the uh, blockchain is a long term thing, and we're building long term solutions, and we're building infrastructure that should go for years. So yeah, I I do understand the sentiment of short term gains, and and that's also something that's really uh, uh, understandable in DeFi, but Tezos is a long-term project. It it is a built a blockchain built to last, uh, upgradable. So there will be DeFi for a very long time and supported for a very long time. So we also need to have that kind of approach and kind of mindset that we're building something for the long term. And last year there was a lot of short-term excitement. Uh, I get that. I was also very hyped, but now we need to also look look to the future and what how can we build a sustainable DeFi ecosystem on Tezos? And I think it's, I think that's perfect. You said it too with that keyword sustainable. I think that's really important, especially for the growth of the community yeah. and you know the growth overall of Tezos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, oh. Me, you? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we learned stuff also about, about yield farming. Like um, it, it's, it's a great mechanism to attract initial liquidity, but in the end, it's not sustainable. So we need to find another way. How do you incentivize liquidity um, that, there, that it's a win-win-win instead of that there is always a losing uh, side of the, of the game? Um, those are things we realized in the last year and we will uh, we will have solutions that will solve these issues and solve the the, the challenges that we uh, didn't knew existed before i think it's uh it's super interesting your path which which was i think close to ours you know it's like how do you solve one problem at a time but like add like longevity to it you know not just like do a quick fix patch and things like that but beyond as you mentioned, like an infrastructure that will be sustainable. On our end, you know, when we started developing RAP, you know, the, um, we looked at, I think we started developing plenty in RAP at the same time, but like, you know, we're looking at the ecosystem and, and, and we're like, okay, if you want like liquidity and if you want activity on, on, on Tezos, you need assets. That's kind of like the first ingredient that you, you know, you can have the fanciest, uh, uh, you know, AMM with the, you know, the most elaborate curve, price curve, you know, if there's no assets to trade on, you know, like there's what, you know, what's the point? So that, that's, you know, that's how we approach it. It's like, okay, let's build a bridge. Let's build a bridge between Ethereum and Tezos. Because like right now, Ethereum was the biggest, the, the, is still the, big, the, the, the chain with the biggest TVL. And like, let's bring assets first. So it really started not as an experiment, but as like a first step towards something that, you know, hopefully one day will be like bigger with more features and things like that. And at the very beginning, we were like, okay, we're going to do a bridge and then we're going to do a, a, a name on top of that. And then we're going to do lending protocols and we're going to have all our own stuff, you know, like vendor branded and like, <laughs> and, 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 and like we quickly realized there's no point in doing that, you know, like collaboration and, 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 and um, uh, how to say, um, how do you say when people, things like go together? Um, building a community? Building a community, composability, composability, yeah. com collaboration is, is something that, you know, as a developer is over, is, is often underestimated, a developer of projects is often underestimated, you know, like rather than building your own AMM, why not just work with an AMM that works, you know, that has liquidity, that has the, the, um, the technology and, and just build something together. So I think that's, you know, that, that's, that's, that's been our path to, to this collaboration. It's like iterate. And then quickly realize that to iterate faster, you need to collaborate and you need to play to create an ecosystem play. So that's that's the how we how we kind of thought about it from the beginning. Hmm. No, I mean I agree with you know what you guys uh, pointed out. So how I look at it is also you know when we started, it was purely started as a yield form, and then you know the excitement built up and okay, we'll build this, this, and this. 
And also at that point of time, you look at the ecosystem overall, it was sort of, you know, um, don't want to use the term, but sort of a bull cycle, uh, right? Everybody was doing gear farming. Gear farming was very cool. And uh, it was right, it was just about the time when EVM chains were launching and people were doing this plenty like platforms to bring, you know, quick liquidity. So we thought, okay, maybe Tezos is also ready. Let's try to do something which can bring quick liquidity. I, I remember the time when Polygon and others had 200 million worth of liquidity overnight with this kind of yield forms, right? But then uh, at that point of time, you know, we started with something as a yield form and did a quick court, 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 uh, kind of tokenomics. And then we started, okay, let's, you know, how we could make it sustainable. But I think, in most of the protocols or products, wherever you have mechanism design, they get tested when you know the market gets pulled up, right? That's when you realize that you what things you need to think over, and uh, what are you know how to really make it sustainable. And how I look at it is on Tezos is even right now, like there's plenty, there's AMM, but there's people step, but the liquidity is is there, but it's not you know what we what Tezos deserve, right? It's not something. Uh, if I can be really good here. So you need to have more assets. You need both kinds of assets. You need to have more bridge asset. Now liquidity from Ethereum itself have gone to multiple different fragments on Polygon, Avalanche. So you need to be composable with these other chains. Uh, and also while doing that, you also need to build your own as synthetic asset sort of ecosystem, right? Which for which for which we uh, get inspiration from Checker. So you, you should have both this asset, you should have more assets. Once you have more assets, then more assets will be traded. Will be traded against each other. So once you have the assets, then you can optimize the trading. Then you can do flat curve, then you can use FP3, then you can do curve V2, et cetera. Or maybe new innovative curve, right? But uh, you have to have those assets and have to have those liquidity. And then you can um, create sort of a governance model that you know keeps that uh, keeps the entire uh, entire framework that you create evolving. So yeah, like Curve is doing really good in that example for like like VCRV, where you know they are now driving mechanism to basically really that okay we this farm or this thing needs to be needs to have more CRV rewards. So I think. We have uh, also learned a lot during this entire since since, since we have started, and uh, to enable how to bring better composability and start from the fundamental. Okay, this is the fundamental thing that needs to be there in order to build another second thing. So, I think this is the step in that direction to uh, build the foundation. And once we have the foundation, then you know, people can keep building on more and more, more curves, more AMMs, whatever. But yeah. Awesome. Yeah, no, ex extremely well said. Uh, I, I like how everyone had a really like detailed answer, you know, but it was all, it was, everyone had a different view on it too. Um, I, I think we should start getting into some of these questions. They're kind of, there's a lot. I'll say that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first question is for you, Hugo. Um, so what will happen to wrap and features of the wrap protocol? We know that it's ending in four weeks or the rewards are going to end for four weeks. Um, liquidity money right now is uh, on hold, and yeah. So, so what is what is next for just wrap specifically? Yeah. So <clears throat> we'll so for wrap token holders, we'll stop the issuance of new wraps in four weeks uh, because you know, like we distribute wrap tokens like four weeks after the based on the activity four weeks prior. So, so in four weeks, we'll we'll stop the issuance of wraps, um, and then after that, wrap holders will be able to swap. Their token into PLY tokens, which is the new token of the Plenty Network ecosystem, uh, through a smart contracts, so or something that we're you know we're, we're collaboratively going to build. So that's that's going that's what's going to happen as to wrap the protocol. So Burnt and Ohm and the Tesher team is going to take over this, take over the quorum, take over the the operation of the bridge, and integrate it into like the Plenty ecosystem. So that's a short answer to to your question. Um, yeah, and then um, so fee farming uh, will remain active until the full integration with Plenty. Fee farming will remain active, but will benefit PNY tokens. You know. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, this next one is for you, Vernon Ohm. Um, so, how does this merger fit into your plan uh, to build the Plenty Network in 2022? 
like there's still a problem of liquidity in Tezos. And um, just as I said earlier, like it, it's also a, a, a chicken and egg story. Like on many different blockchains, you have uh, new kinds of projects, new kind of experiments going. Is that because of the, uh, there is already liquidity or are they bringing the liquidity in? Like, so we try to do both things. So we support projects uh, uh, that will launch on Tezos, but also want to use bridged assets. So we do the pulling of liquidity in and also something to do with it. So that's the stuff for the bridge. And um, one other cool thing we can do is if we have multiple bridges is create flat curves between, let's say, USDC.A from Avalanche with USDC.E from Ethereum. And then you can also do cool stuff with that LP token of that uh, liquidity pool. So a lot of new uh, products become possible. And now also with view functions that are there now on Tezos, uh, it just becomes easier for others to build uh, using stuff we've built. And um, so it's not only a thing that we, we do, it's also um, trying to build an ecosystem around it so that other teams can come in and use the stuff we've built and build on top of it. So we do want to open source um, all our stuff that's, that's in the roadmap that we, we just want to share as much of our uh, smart buy uh, uh, code with the community, with new developers. So it becomes easier to build because it's, it, it's been a challenge the last year and on other ecosystems, you see a huge growth in projects because everything is open source. Like a lot is open source on Tezos, but still um, like maybe I'm rambling a bit, but uh, smart Pi is the language for new developers because it's Python. Uh, many developers in the world know Python. Unfortunately, not many developers in the world know OCaml. So it it will be easier or to get more developers through SmartPy. So by open sourcing more and more stuff that we've built in SmartPy, uh, we want to support the entire Tezos ecosystem uh, and bring uh, more liquidity in, let people build on top of Plenty, but also take a look at our code base and see what you can use to build Epic stuff. Yeah, no, and like you said, like it's really interesting because you know, as we said in the beginning, you know, collaboration, like like that's that's something that's that's key to success, and you know, not just crypto, but you know, overall. So it's going to be interesting to see how you know this all pans out. Um, yeah, that's why we also wanted to do that hackathon uh, uh, last year, and it's still going on right now. Um, just trying to get as many new developers in because we need more brains, <laughs> we know we need more builders. Uh, um, and yeah, we need exciting new products to try out uh, for uh, DeFi uh, users. So not only a DEX where you can trade, but also something to do with the assets that you trade. And that's, so there are multiple parts that needs to be uh, improved in this whole DeFi ecosystem, but we're trying to do as much as we can in all these different uh, sections. Hmm. And well one other thing, uh, other thing to add is that uh, bridging has become more common and common for a generic crypto uh, for a DeFi user. Now there are so many bridges. Uh, it's also important to you know look at the security side of it, which is a different topic. But a lot of people are aware about you know everybody is uh, these days is uh, using bridges on a on a daily basis. The problem with Ethereum is, uh, first of all, high gas cost. And now a lot of people have become familiarized where they are keeping their assets on our lunch or Polygon. But now what happens is if you enable users to push their assets from our lunch to Tezos, it gets done within how much? Six minutes. If we look at the current penalty of the time of Tezos, or maybe let's say maximum 10 minutes, right? Uh, and due to an earlier, that was not the case with Tezos before the last upgrade, that finality time was uh, 30 confirmation, which what Red Wrap uses and also 30 from Ethereum side. 
right? So it used to take time. But now with new tender bake and more faster finality time, when it becomes one minute, you would be essentially able to wrap your assets, wrap and unwrap within a minute through at least, let's say, Polygon, Avalanche, and Solana. So the entire UX also becomes a lot smoother, right? And the eventual goal for the bridges is to let, when, how we think about it is let users bridge all their assets to Tezos and then also give them an option to uh, convert those bridge assets to uh, you know, something that is Tezos native. It could be, let's say, synthetic assets, right? Could be something like um, DAI or let's say, uh, uh, let's say if USDC comes to Tezos uh, tomorrow, we let users uh, bridge usdc.a.e.p from Polygon all into Ethereum. Uh, we create a meta pools like Flatcore and then give them one click options that, okay, now you have had your Tezos experience. Why don't you go and convert your all the USDC you brought to Tezos native USDC? So these are the plans and pipelines that we have in the head that how we eventually want to um, create the semi fungibility of this bridge assets to total fungibility, uh, making them the Tezos native ones. So just yeah, that's also on the pipeline on Lombardia. I'm I'm really liking what I'm here, and I'm really excited to see where this goes because uh, I love Tezos, you know. So, <laughs> um, but so this next one is for you, Hugo. We already touched on it a little bit um, on how is how Plenty is going to be, you know, overseeing the governance and basically everything to do with Rap Protocol. Um, but what's going to happen to the Rap Quorum? The Rap Quorum, <clears throat> the the structure of a quorum is going to still stay the same because it's important for the the balance of the of the protocol, right? So to make sure that there's no uh, attackant that can like single-handedly, you know, like steal funds from the quorum and things like that. So it's important for the security of the of the protocol to have a quorum. So there, there's still gonna be this concept of quorum. Um, now, you know, how big it's gonna be, who's gonna be in that, like that's gonna be up to, to the Tesla team, you know, uh, going forward. Um, but the concept of quorum will stay the same because it's an important concept for the security of the protocol. And I don't know if you saw, but like, uh, wormhole which is a bridge which is a little bit different like they they got like you know they got hacked so security is is a is a matter like that we especially in the context of bridges that we shouldn't underestimate you know um and so like the security approach that we that rap has has used is like having this semi trusted setup with like entities you know that are recognized in the tesos ecosystem that share the responsibility of the security so that's I think this concept was still the same, but you know, it's it's up to to the guys here, like how how that's gonna evolve. Yeah, I mean, I I want to mention, you know, uh, that's a good thing because we have seen two kinds of hack. There was one hack where uh, the bridge got hacked because it was just a single signer, and then there was this one more case, which is totally different. But we do believe, you know, the the thing, uh, the bridge that that has that team has built is quite resilient and. Uh, it's, it's very good, right? So we don't want to reinvent the wheel or do any changes, not want to even change the structure. It is going to be multi-sig, you know, three out of five or five out of eight, something like that, distributed across continents, uh, definitely all the members. And uh, as we keep going on on the journey, right, we will, uh, to ensure the security, once all things are, once the transition phase is completed, basically, we would also look to, uh, we would also try to look, you know, how we can make it more resilient. So, and we do have a couple of examples like uh, Polygon Bridge we have looked into uh, and Avalanche Bridge. Polygon is a five out of eight and, you know, it's a different people all across the seven continents, something like that. But yeah, this is this is something that we'll make sure to stay with the same structure, keep it multisig, good enough, right? And then go on to expanding it more whenever required. Awesome. Yeah, no, security is super important. Like we said, you know, the, with the wormhole bridge, um, you know, stuff like that to some degree can be avoided. Um, but so talking a little bit more into uh, the bridge, uh, question for you, Vernon Elm. Uh, will Plenty continue the wrapped NFT feature? And if so, to what degree? Hmm. That's an interesting question. So uh, wrapping NFT, wrapping, wrapping NFTs is, you know, still a part of our discussions that we do from time to time was while bridging has become very common, right? Uh, the wrapping NFT, wrapping NFTs hasn't become uh, as, uh, you know, as big as we would, we had expected uh, in, initially, but still we are looking at it uh, with, you know, that what, what possibility or how, if there's some other 
different way that we could enable it, right? So for example, there's a hackathon going on and some people are building really cool AI and NFT kind of stuff. So it's a, it's an open question. Uh, there's certainly not a, a no or a yes, but it's an open question that, will, that we are still discussing. It just has to be something, you know, which can just take off and then uh, you can totally do that. Yeah, and again, here's the, it's a facilitator, again, the wrapping of an NFT. Like now there needs to be a product, something that we can do on the Tazel side, like fractionalizing NFTs, for example, is a very interesting topic and we've looked into before as well. So it would go more in uh, that kind of a direction so that there is an actual reason to bridge your assets, mm -hmm. uh, those NFTs. Because, um, yeah, we've seen rep uh, take off when we did... Uh, uh, launched initial plenty so i think i think it can be a huge uh opportunity if we do something with fractionalized nfts because then the bridge is there so people just need yeah. to use it if we have a really cool product to give to the community yeah of course we will uh we will share that and use yeah, the bridge. And, and seeing some of the prizes uh, of tezzers recently i think that'd be pretty uh pretty cool pretty useful yeah definitely and do to add to that is, you know, I think it would, uh, it would, it could maybe done in two phases. First of all, on Ethereum itself, NFTs are not as liquid that you can, you know, go to compound and put your BAYC and take some loans against it, right? You can do fractionalization, which is recently is becoming sort of a, a way to go. Uh, but I think once, you know, the market is that big or that liquid that you could literally take loans against your BAYC, uh, but on Ethereum, it's very expensive or you want to do that on Tezos, wrap it up on Tezos, keep it on Tezos whenever you want, take a loan in CTAs or some it's a stable coin, do your trades and pay with the loan. So this kind of stuff, I think, would be really interesting. And that thing would, I think, would come sooner. This kind of stuff would come sooner for Tezos native NFTs uh, than the wrapped NFTs. But yeah, I think we still have some time to watch it carefully. Um, just a quick, uh, quick side note, a uh, community member, Hermit, um, just said, isn't Crunchy looking at fractionalized NFTs? Um, so I guess that's something that, you know, we could explore at, you know, and do some more calibra calibration there, um, if possible. Yeah, definitely. That, that, that's, that's a great example where uh, the bridge acts as a facilitator to support another project in the Tezos ecosystem. And that's how it should be. It should not all, all be like, the bridge is part of the Plenty Network and Plenty Network keeps everything. <laughs> That's not at all what, what this is about. This is about growing the Tezos ecosystem uh, as a whole. Um, so another question is, um, what will the swap interface look like? Uh, I guess this is just kind of open-ended. Um, I assume it's gonna be very similar to the Plenty interface uh, or in the CTES interface, but um, yeah, anything we could get on that too, that'd be great. Yeah, we're, we're working on the designs right now. So we'll share definitely a few screenshots, uh, I think next week from the, for the yeah. swap. Right, totally pretty cool. Very useful. Yeah, and and, and one, one thing that I didn't mention before, uh, I think Ohm touched on it, like UI UX is, is super important to us. Like DeFi should be easy to use and not look like uh, an application built in the, in the 90s uh, uh, where you can only participate if you are aware of all the latest internet memes. No, it should be accessible for all. So that's what we're trying to achieve, make it uh, easy to understand, uh, provide guides, uh, videos. Uh, same with CTES, right? CTES is a very complex product, but we're working on ways to... Um, explain users like what is the target, what is the drift, um, educate users and uh, um, yeah, bring them along for the, for the journey. Phenomenal. Yeah. Cause it's, it's all about community, you know, um, mm -hmm. definitely the, the bread and butter there. Um, quick question from zoom uh, H3 says, is there a timeline on which the existing plenty pools and associated rewards will be wound down? I know we touched on wrap. We haven't touched too much on plenty yet. 
uh, I think with plenty, uh, I think maybe it is mentioned in article, but until you know, uh, the all the smart contracts and all the new interfaces, like the things will keep. It, it it's not that plenty is going. Plenty is now paused. No new stuff will happen. No new product will come, and you gotta wait for two months and something new will come. So things will keep going as it is. The farms will stay open. You can keep farming because eventually you'll be able to swap your plenty for PLY token, right? So it will keep going on until the new thing is there. And the new products and UI and UX updates, etc. This of minus stuff will also keep. It will stay. It will stay usable throughout the the way, and the usability will keep increasing further and further. All right, thank you for that. Um, this next question, I think, is kind of a, a twofold question. Um, so it's going to be, how can can you explain how the PLY token works, the PLY token, and also, do we have a rough timeline uh, on the swap of that token? Uh, can users uh, expect PLY in their wallets like four weeks from now, or six months from now, or somewhere in between? Because, um, like as you said, uh, you know, plenty isn't pausing on new projects. It's you know, continuing to grow and then add this as well. Yeah, we deliberately didn't add dates to the phases. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but of course, I understand that there are, that people want like answers to different phases, but uh, like we would love to get certain contracts audited, uh, like the swap contracts or the vesting contracts, like when a huge amount of tokens will be in a certain contract for a longer period of time. You need to make sure that contract does exactly what we think it should do. So um, we're trying to get like timelines from audit companies, for example. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to get the, the, the entire plan uh, inside different sprints. But as you know, you, 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 it's still software so you're not really like you try to finish all your backlog each sprint but you're never sure so we'll definitely share some more exact dates in the coming weeks but uh, it, it won't take six months no not not, not at all yeah. that long like yeah. we're trying to do everything we can to make it as fast as possible but still as safely as possible yeah no burn is right i mean once you know two or three sprints from our side is clear, some backlog is clear, then we can, we'll have more calculative idea. And then the uncertainty part is always, your code is ready, everything is there. Now audits, <laughs> so booking that time, because sometimes they say, oh, we are not free this time, and no, the setting, coordinating that. It, that's the huge variable in timeline as well. But we, we can dive into the, the, the first <clears throat> two phases though, like, the, the swapping of the of the wrapped assets to uh, the new name convention that's something that we're uh, focusing on for this this sprint and also the the avalanche bridge and um, yeah we yesterday we we had an amazing uh, front end demo of the of a working uh, a bridge already so now we're just uh, linking it up to the implementation on Avalanche testnet and Tezos testnet. So, um, yeah, that can that can go fairly quick, I think. Launching that that bridge. So, and then you're already at the end, almost at the end of phase two. And in article, there's four phases. So we're going pretty fast then. So, or maybe I'm I'm I'm. Uh, reducing my or throwing out in my own windows now by saying that we're going so fast but <laughs> we're trying to go as fast as possible um one other new thing that we could mention is that we uh received an a grade for the flat curve audit so that will be also launched really quickly and it will have few functions uh, so it will be more composable for other projects so yeah, we'll just continue to release new features whenever they are ready. And that's also what we wanted to make clear. Like it won't be like a relaunch moment. We're doing it in phases and um, to avoid like a, like a huge 
uh, event or something like that where everything happens on the same day. You need to swap your tokens, uh, remove liquidity, um, all those things at the same time. No, we want to make it a smooth transition. And that's why it can take, uh, like not each phase will take the same amount of time. And, uh, so, so on that note too, uh, you mentioned something, uh, you know, that I wanted to touch on is, so one of the questions I've seen a lot is when should I pull my liquidity? And I think this is a good, uh, good question for both parties. Like it all, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm, I have no idea if you should pull your liquidity right now or then I, I can't look into the future. Like <laughs> we are not e stopping anything at this moment. So it, it's a personal decision, your own investment decision. And we're not suddenly going to stop rewards or anything uh, or uh, completely turn off the systems. That's not something we, we will do. <laughs> so it will keep running as a project. And whenever the new uh, uh, token comes, uh, we will announce it. Of course, we will guide the user through it. Like the actual swapping of to, to the Ply token is in phase four. So uh, an exact date can't be given yet, but when we start phase three, we, we can be more specific and give uh, user guidelines of if you remove now, if you remove your liquidity now, uh, you have enough time to do this, 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 and this. Um, or you can wait and, and do it later, but uh, we can definitely add advices to uh, or advice to uh, what a user could do. I agree with uh, Bern. You know, like it's uh, it's uh, every liquidity provider's own personal decision because, like as Bern mentioned, you know, like as of right now, there's no PLY token, so like there's still the plenty token and the wrap token with their own economics, and so everybody, anyone makes their own like investment decision like we're not here to uh, to advise um once the ply is there you know like obviously once the ply is there the economics is going to be on the ply token so you know a logical rational step would be to you know pull liquidity and, and swap your the plenty old plenty token and the wrap token into the ply token but again it's not a it's not an advice not anything yeah but... let me rephrase but also not an advice <laughs> <laughs> it's just like what's what seems rational but again you know yeah it's, um, everybody makes their own decisions yeah but we'll definitely <laughs> give more information to make a better calculate or make a more calculated decision as a user mm. all right and i think uh i think just the last one just wanted to touch on is um from we already talked about you know previous successes um you know we talked about c tez uh we talked about you know back when you know d fine tez was its infancy uh do we see any any potential collaboration down the road again uh between the two companies i mean we're pretty much merging the two companies so <laughs> that's kind of the ultimate uh, the ultimate collaboration I, I think you know like the uh, <clears throat> As far as I'm concerned, you know, like the 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 our focus is going to be to make sure that the Plenty network grows, and by growing, grows the Tezos ecosystem as a whole, the DeFi ecosystem, um, and support in things like, you know, not just like product and technology, but also like making sure that there's uh, on the fundraising aspect, you know, that you know there's like enough capital to support these efforts. And and yeah, just just grow as a as one team, um, the Plenty Network. Definitely, man. Yeah, we we can like again. We we want to use as much brains as we can to build epic shit. And uh, yeah, that's why we're all here. And yeah, collaboration is key. And it's great that we found each other. <laughs> I think it's going to be the quote of the year for you, Burn. It's almost from an old epic man. shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, cool. Um, cool. But yeah, that's that's all I have. Um, that's everything I could get from the community. Unless you you all want to add something. Uh, no, yeah, man. I have a I have a few questions from the Discord. Like I can open it. Let's see.
like what what are the plans around DOI and and curve? Oh, okay, maybe touch on that a little bit. Like, yeah, what is possible yeah. with with like we first had X plenty. <laughs> now we'll do yeah. something differently, or different. Yeah. So uh, with curve, the thing is, you know, so we have look we look into very successful governance models, and we are still exploring that. So initially with X plenty, the plan was, you know, so in, even in initially it was more like, okay, there will be X plenty and there will be some sort of, uh, some bunch of stuff that people could do with AMM, like, okay, they want to list this pair with it, but it was all AMM centric, right? There's a plenty AMM and this is the bunch of stuff you could do with X plenty, like loading the transition piece, adding a piece, but not exactly like VCRV that how much reward should be given or how much should be transferred, something like that. There were some technical challenges. And then now when we are doing into this, I mean, from beginning, not beginning, but lately uh, the curve, and if, if you look into the governance space, you know, I've been, you've been feeling that there is a, a, you know, a very proven model to do governance, actually. Uh, the v VCRV one is very, very cool. If you look at it, uh, that is establishes curve as it is right now. And there are multiple sub, sub products that are being built like, uh, there people are, communities are driving the VCRV holders to vote for specific, uh, to give incentives to a specific firm, for example. So that was one thing, okay, this is this really worked, this is pretty cool, VCRV. And then the recently since, uh, I think people know Andre Koje who announced VE33 type of governance. Uh, that's also, you know, around that time, we had also been, brainstorming around Olympus, you know, the governance of Olympus, governance of VCRV. And when we looked into it, it's something like our ideas were, you know, literally written on Medium article. And I thought, okay, this is, this is, this makes sense, V33 uh, kind of model where your inflation of your token is depending upon uh, how much people are participating in your governance, right? So usually the issue is how you, how do you decide inflation in your governance? So it should be 30%, 10%, how much farm reward should be there, should be given. And I, would uh, recommend you just to read about V3C. We can share an article in Discord. Uh, they have a really nice system to decide when there should be deflation, when should be inflation, and how the reward should be distributed. Sort of like uh, 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 governance is from, it is sort of VCRV plus Olympus now, uh, C3 model, and that really makes sense for governance. And once it is out there, um, right, once it's out there, it's, it's completely then up to users. And second thing I want to mention is um, what we also thought about governance in a way is that governance should be complementary. It should not be uh, sort of like a necessity or a requirement because for example, if you look into MakerDAO, MakerDAO is maybe, it's, it's a good example, not a, that good example. There are multiple projects which has governance, right? Which are governance dependence. And if governance gets manipulated in some way, which has happened in some cases, then by manipulating governance, you can increase your interest rate, decrease your interest rate, and your if you are ever have a synthetic asset, it could lose its pay back, right? So governance should be more like should be a mean of uh, incentivizing more users, completely in control of uh, uh, holders of the specific tokens who can earn revenue. It's sort of like a complement to the system, uh, which also rewards uh, people who are participating in the system instead of something that if governance gets hacked, your system will crash, right? And that's why we like CTAs and Checker and all this brainstorming a little bit more that you just need governance to basically incentivize and decreasing inflation on deflation of your system and remove the manual. Okay. Yeah, that's a great answer. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, yeah, and also like we, we started experimenting with X Plenty and we tried, uh, we, we finished, uh, like we completed one proposal uh, uh, and the plan was to introduce more and more uh, variables that can be changed through governance. But the entire system of VE CRV is just better uh, in its core. So it's a great opportunity to then introduce this kind of mechanism with this merger. So 
um, there were a lot of ideas in our head, but now with this merger, they all come together and, and it's the great moment to, to throw it all together and make one all in one DeFi experience on Tezos. Yeah, and this governance uh, thing will also be available pretty soon uh, with, uh, within the timeline of the launch. Let's say it launches today within two or three weeks, uh, the governance should be active and parking. That's good. Hopefully, think of this. <laughs> but yeah, this is clear in our mind. You know, this is how we are looking at it all. Yeah. Like there, there are also uh, a few more in depth questions. Um, but yeah, we'll share more details about numbers and all that stuff in the coming weeks. So we'll definitely keep the community updated on, uh, uh, yeah, all the all the latest stuff. And we will um, be open for feedback, of course. Like, please join the discussion and and uh, help us make DeFi on Tezos better, <laughs> because that's that's what it's all about. Like we're trying to do what we think is best but maybe you have like the the, the billion dollar idea and uh, yeah we're here to collaborate let us know and we'll build together yeah that's dope cool guys awesome. thank you very much awesome. for taking thanks, the time thanks you all. thank you for the audience for the participants who stayed for an hour <laughs> and it's all it's all very exciting thank you alex as well for MCing. Of course. And we will be making uh, this recording uh, available online. I'll share it with uh, you guys. You can guys can share it on your uh, channels. Cool. Sure. Awesome, so, guys. Have thanks, a good guys. Yeah, guys. Thank you so much Bye, for your everyone. time. Bye. Have a great day.